because I've been paying attention to these guys who go uh-huh. down to like Colombia uh-huh. and these like ugly dudes who go down to Colombia <laughs> and get these bomb ass Colombian now, chicks. Now you got to make the distinction. There's yeah. a distinction there. There are some who kind of go in there. They're just they're really honestly going there to have fun. Right. Right. And then there are some who are honestly kind of looking for something more traditional because these places right. tend to have more of a traditional structure. Right. So it, the, the, like I think you kind of have to split that dynamic a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot of variables yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. But it, but just at the same time like you said, then there's guys from other countries, foreign countries when they come to America to get women. It's yeah. so it's so weird how you kind of have this like crossing of the seas in order to get the same thing in different places. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I don't I don't know. I'm and there's Look, my mom, my, grand, my grand, my grandma, my mom, my mom's hitting me up for grandbabies every other day. Uh oh. So I'm the last person to be talking to about this. Are you ever gonna do it? <laughs> uh, I mean, if it happens, it happens. So it's like you just have to find the right combination of woman circumstance. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I'm obsessed with my freedom, mm. right? And it's and it's to a fault. Yeah. And so, and I'm not against it, but but it's also served you well. It has, it has, and I and I guard it viciously right because right. we've all seen men that got trapped yeah hence my conversation about my friend earlier that has to pay child support exactly yeah but, and and i usually don't even talk about this because largely when you do speak about it publicly nobody ever tries to see that from your perspective right right it's just it's just like what you're are you a doing? woman like, hater yes yeah. exactly yeah. You're, yeah. Mis- you're a player misogyny Misogynist. right yeah you're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah you're a misant yeah <laughs> yeah but which is fine i've i've I have, I've kind of built up walls that don't really, that doesn't right. really bother me. You can't really shame me that way. Um, largely because what I'm doing is I'm protecting my peace. Yeah. And also yeah. you've seen the other side of it. It's not like you don't know what the negative consequences I've are. Definitely we've, seen the other side of it. We've all seen horrific yeah. relationships. Yeah. And that's why I think it's men largely. Are emasculated. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah. controlling. And there's another thing that happens in those controlling relationships that I was watching this conversation. This woman who was a psychologist was having with this other podcaster. I forget who it was. But she was saying that essentially one of the problems that happens with women is that they have this desire to control their environment and control men. But then as soon as they control men, <laughs> they stop being they stop being attracted to that man. I never listen to what women say in terms of what they want. Really? No, I, I just got, always I, assume there's some. No, I just watched actions because mm. actions are there. Yeah, right. Because you got to remember, like women are women live in a very socialized reality, right? Like you don't when you think lone wolf, you don't think lone woman. You think lone, right. you think lone man. Right. So they're conditioned, and I'm I'm speaking general. Like there's always exceptions, right? But generally speaking, they're social creatures, so they're gonna say what they're supposed to say, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. otherwise they're going to be judged. Because if a woman, you've asked a woman, what does she want? She was like, oh, I want a nice guy who's st- who's stable, who's who's sweet, and so forth and so on. Because if she says no, I want I want the bad boy right. rocker who does you know whatever. She, yeah. People are going to judge her for that for that desire. Right. Um. And but then again, at the same time, she still actually may want both. Right. 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 And, and, and in in many ways, thinks she can have both. Because remember that roster. With yes. all the different guys <laughs> that serve different yes. purposes. The backup man. Yeah. Um, so you know, there's that aspect to it that I think um, I un- I understand it. I do, but I don't make decisions off of what I don't. I won't make decisions off of it because I understand what somebody does versus what they say can be two totally different things. Yeah. Well, that's the lawyer in you too. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also there's another problem, and the other problem is media depictions of relationships. Mm-hmm. And that these media depictions of relationships are not based on actual relationships. They're based on playing to these desires that people have for this perfect thing. Yeah. And I think it creates a I, I think it creates an unattainable standard because what I've learned from my friends that I know who are married and are in good marriages, but from what I can gauge, shit's hard. It's not always fun. It it isn't. And I think a lot of people look at relation and even just relationships in general. They're not, it's not an easy thing to do. You're talking about two different people. You're talking about people who are totally different. They may come together in some commonality, which is why they're attracted to each other. But you're still talking about two different personalities who have to come together and live with each other. Right. And so that's not an easy thing to do. And it's also why people are attracted to each other. Exactly. They're not attracted generally it's to the same, same type of personality. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. Which yeah. is absolutely true. I think those media depictions of reality, they fuck us up in so many ways 
because people look to movies and yeah. and songs and they look to that as their model of what life should be including other aspects of your life outside of relationships like retirement mm -hmm. like people have this like idea like one day i'm gonna retire and i'm gonna have a great no you're gonna die earlier you're gonna be disinterested and <laughs> unengaged and you're not gonna be stimulated and you're gonna fucking die that's funny you said that because i'll be honest with you i had that like Sometimes, like, 99%, all I do is work. You know that about yeah. me. You know, I'm always working, yeah. now, which is why I think I'm also so passionate about the things that have nothing and to do with And also why you're so passionate about freedom, because exactly. you don't want anybody to get in the way of that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I always have this fantasy that I thought I would reach a point where I could just do nothing, and I would do nothing, and I would just enjoy the rest of my life doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> The more I talk to people who are further along in their life than me, further along in their career than I, people who have retired, they all say the same thing, and it echoes the sentiment that you just said. The last thing you want to do is do nothing. Yeah. Because you will die early. Yeah, you don't want to sit like, on the porch. Yeah. I might want to sit on the porch for a for few, few hours. hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. It's yeah. nice to relax. I yeah. like watching TV occasionally. Yeah. That, sit yeah. down, yep. and when I know that I've done a lot and I can just chill – and watch some stupid shit on TV. <laughs> yep. Great. I like it. Yeah. I, I've figured out a way to enjoy that. But the idea of doing nothing, I may get to a certain point where I don't work anymore. Yes. But I will always be doing stuff. Something, I'll always yeah. be bow hunting. I'll mm -hmm. always be working out. I'll always be playing pool. I'll always be following hobbies. I'll yeah. always be doing things that I'm interested in. Yeah. But the what I'm lucky about, and I think what you're lucky about as well, is that the things that we're interested in are also the things we do for a living. And I, that's why I feel so blessed. Oh, we're so lucky. Yeah. We're so lucky. We're, there's so many people out there. It's that Thoreau quote, that most men live lives of quiet desperation. And when you're doing what you actually enjoy doing, you are so much better off than someone who's insanely wealthy, who's miserable because they don't like what they're doing and they're just making money. I like working for it. Like I said, before investments that I've made that have done really well, I like working yeah. For each and every dollar. I you like creating I like, good content. Yes. And I, like, I genuinely yeah. love it. Yeah. Like it's, and, and it sucks sometimes. I'll be honest. Sure. It's, like, it's difficult. Yeah. Very. Yeah. The pressure you put on yourself. Like it's, it's, it can be maddening, but it's also rewarding. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, that's part of the journey of what makes things interesting and intriguing. And I think the way human beings evolved, we evolved trying to solve complex puzzles. And in, initially it was, how do I get food? Yeah. How do I protect my village? How do I protect my family? How do I avoid plague and fucking predators and yeah. all these? So people had to solve, solve complex problems. Yep. problems. So it's a natural human reward system. That Are you tired of sitting in discomfort, feeling restricted in your chair? It's time for a change. Introducing the UN Racing Chair XLL, where innovation meets comfort. Experience the ultimate in relaxation with the magnetic slow rebound memory foam head pillow. Say goodbye to stiff necks and hello to customized support, adapting to your movements for an unparalleled comfort. Your well-being is a priority. The UN Racing Chair XL comes equipped with a 40 integrated lumbar support system, ensuring optimal back support tailored to your body's unique contours. Elevate your gaming or work setup with magnetic full metal Ford to you padded armrests. Feel the sturdiness and enjoy the luxury of adjustable armrests that conform to your preferred position. Immerse yourself in the revolutionary temperature and pressure sensitive cold cure foam core. This advanced technology provides the perfect balance of firmness and comfort, responding to your body's needs for an unrivaled seating experience. Unlike other chairs that can bear a maximum of 300 pounds, the UN Racing Chair XL is designed to support up to 500 pounds. Strength and durability, because we understand that your comfort should never be compromised. Let's talk numbers. When it comes to comfort, weight capacity, and innovative features, the UN Racing Chair XL outshines the competition. Don't settle for less. Choose the chair that sets the new standard. But wait, there's more. Order now and enjoy the benefits of improved posture, reduced fatigue, and increased productivity. Plus, use code Jerry at checkout for an exclusive discount. So upgrade your seating experience today with the Win Racing Chair XLL, where comfort meets performance. Visit uinracing.com and transform the way you sit.